Hello. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, this session is about uh, SIG multi-cluster introduction in data and uh, the updates from the community members. Uh, I am Shashi from Huawei. I've been an active contributor to uh, SIG multi-cluster, uh, particularly in federation. So I'm joined here with uh, Shuntan from IBM China. So he has been uh, uh, contributing a lot recently. Uh, so probably he will speak in Chinese, so you may understand better <coughs> about the deep dive. He will cover that. <clears throat> so coming to agenda, this is what we have uh, for today, like mission. Uh, this has been already uh, spoken about uh, in various occasions, but still we reiterate for the benefit of the crowd. Uh, then about we'll talk about the active projects uh, under the SIG, but this is not a exhaustive list of the projects um, which are inside the scope, but we have been actively involved in these two. So this is what we'll talk about. And uh, we'll talk about what we have been doing in the recent past. And then we'll give a deep dive into Kubernetes cluster federation uh, concepts which we have built around in the recent times. And uh, we hope uh, we'll have an interactive Q&A session. We'll give a lot of uh, time for that probably. <coughs> so coming to SIG multi-cluster mission, uh, this is a special interest group uh, focused on solving common challenges uh, with respect to application management in uh, across multiple clusters. So we are responsible for uh, designing, implementing, and maintaining uh, the APIs, uh, tools, and documentation around the or related to the multi-cluster have. <coughs> so uh, this does not. Uh, only include the active automated approaches like the Kubernetes cluster federation, but the scope also includes uh, many other multi-cluster systems like the workflow-based uh, uh, continuous uh, deployment system like Spinnaker. Uh, so what we intend to do within the SIG is basically to build, uh, basically to provide a basic building block uh, to address this multi-cluster scenarios. So um, we, uh, the problem domain is multifaceted and we don't expect everything to be solved within uh, like one project or so. So there are many existing projects like the STM multi-cluster or uh, the recently the Submariner, uh, which tries to address the multi-cluster networking. Uh, so we are very much excited to uh, hear about that. There's a session later today about Submariner. So I appreciate like um, everybody could attend that too. So uh, so this uh, this has been outlined in the our community uh, web page also. So you can have a look at that. <coughs> now coming to <coughs> the active work efforts. So uh, these have been actively pursued within the SIG right now. Uh, so the, if you ask uh, really, uh, the SIG is kind of dispersed team. There are multiple communities right now within this uh, domain. Uh, like if you um, multi-cluster, could be some mariner, uh, to name a few, uh, there are many others. So uh, within the SIG, what we basically do is to build basic building blocks. We don't try to provide a uh, complete solution for everything. So end-to-end uh, -end kind of a solution. Probably we just build the basic building blocks common to all projects. And then that can be reused um, by the uh, systems which are implementing the multi-cluster scenarios. <coughs> OK. So uh, coming to cluster identity, this has been identified uh, quite a long time back. Uh, but uh, it was uh, kind of a stall, uh, uh, but recently we have been uh, feeling like okay, uh, this needs uh, uh, this needs to be in place. 
so uh, many other project assistants they have went ahead and uh, implemented their own cluster identity um, which becomes a hurdle uh, when you want to mix uh, or uh, reuse some components from other projects so, uh, so basically the motivation behind cluster identity is right now the kubernetes cluster doesn't offer uh, uh, like unique identity where the cluster can be identified with so this is uh, uh, particularly important when you are dealing with multiple clusters like uh, when you have multiple clusters you might need to know like uh, where which uh, the resource in which uh, log uh, like uh, log or events related to that it is coming from which cluster uh, so it has been a really important thing so there has been a lot of discussion going on um, in the SIG so it is almost finalized probably we can see uh, API uh, within Kubernetes core uh, to identify a cluster so that would be uh, soon added <coughs> and the next uh, Active projects which we are pretty much uh, we are all involved in is uh, Kubefed. So uh, this has a uh, quite a long history, and uh, recently, like a month or two, uh, we renamed the uh, Federation V2 uh, to Kubefed. So it started from Federation V1, but uh, uh, we initially started off uh, uh, being compatible with the KTS API, but uh, that posed uh, quite a lot of um, uh, overhead so we moved on uh, it is kind of an evolution right now so right now the kubified is not a catch-all kind of a system uh, we try to provide only the basic building walls and uh, uh, try to be modular enough so that it could be uh, used with other projects like maybe you can go ahead and use kubified along with uh, so multi cluster or maybe submariner uh, whatever project is required so we try to be lightweight and try to offer only the uh, like you can choose which features you would like it <coughs> so okay so cookpad is uh, basically short form for kubernetes cluster federation so we have recently renamed it to cookpad and uh, uh, the tool name also we moved from cookpad 2 to cookpad kettle and this is our vanity URL, which where Kubefed uh, is currently available. So, so let's talk about the Kubefed. What is it fit for right now? So, it is basically to coordinate, like a user, if he wants to coordinate configuration across uh, multiple clusters. Uh, maybe it, it could be a few clusters. It could be hundreds of clusters. So, uh, Kubefed would be a right choice it should uh, seemingly uh, seamlessly it can uh, coordinate the configuration the configuration here what we mean is uh, basically about the KTS resources uh, so you want to <coughs> you have hundreds of clusters and then you want to manage them together from the single API, uh, API surface uh, so this would be an ideal fit <coughs> so also this approach also uh, what we have implemented uses the active reconciliation uh, like uh, it actually uh, keeps doing the reconciliation of the desired state of the apps or the resources so <clears throat> so what currently we have is the basic building block so you can go ahead and uh, build high level uh, features around it uh, like the geographic redundancy or a multi cluster scheduler uh, it could be like a cross cluster service discovery so uh, so we are uh, yet to see all those built upon the basic building blocks. So currently where we are at uh, about the stability of the project and such. So um, we have recently <coughs> uh, targeting the beta release so that uh, you could uh, get to use it and uh, give a feedback. But already a uh, lot of users are already started using it and we have uh, received uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, feedback so our rc2 is getting extended so yesterday only we released the rc3 uh, <coughs> so probably uh, you could expect uh, soon like uh, we'll be releasing a beta uh, probably uh, probably beyond that uh, we'll be supporting the backward compatibility uh, for any features we 
are gonna introduce <clears throat> so okay let's talk about what we have been doing so far in the recent past <clears throat> uh, to do that okay i'll uh, take you through a demo uh, to explain what all things are available in the proof pack so we'll be deploying a proof pack control plane then we'll be enabling the uh, data types or federated types and then we'll federate an application a simple application uh, just for the demo and uh, we'll also demonstrate about how to override within a particular cluster and then how you can control the placement of the resources uh, uh, to a specific clusters <clears throat> okay let's jump on to demo okay this is good so uh, okay um, so I have a control plane already deployed here. Uh, I have two clusters here, cluster one and cluster two. And uh, I have a control plane deployed. Basically the control plane is the uh, core APIs of federation plus the controllers which are running. Uh, so, just a minute. This network is a little slow, sorry for that. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, uh, okay, we start with uh, creating a namespace called demo. <clears throat> and uh, create a config map. A deployment and a service. This is a very simple Nginx app. Okay, so uh, the deployment uses the file mounted by the config map um, and uh, offers the web server. So this is the simple app. Now, uh, what we have done is. Uh, we have built a tooling around this, like uh, to take a KTS resource um, and uh, wrap it around and uh, convert it to a uh, federation uh, type, federated type. So uh, what I'm trying to demo here is like uh, the namespace, the contents of the namespace will be federated uh, and up converted to a federation, uh, if, uh, federated types. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, they have been converted, uh, the CRD has been installed and then they have been converted and then installed into Federation API server. So uh, let's go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> so this is uh, the federated deployment type uh, which we have defined. So it, it has a direct use uh, called template, which is basically wraps around your Kubernetes resource. Uh, for example, this here, whatever federated deployment is there, is a deployment uh, within the template. And then we have placement over, uh, sorry, placement directives. Uh, so by default, we uh, place it to all the clusters within the federation. Uh, and there is another directive called override. Uh, by default, it is not uh, uh, enabled. So uh, we'll uh, show that later uh, and then you can see that there is also a status part about the propagation status uh, so to where which clusters the resource has been fe uh, federated okay so right now it is federated to cluster one and two <clears throat> so i have a <clears throat> this is a, a node a port kind of a service so i'm just querying through curl There's a lag, sorry for that. So, okay, uh, I'm querying the cluster one. So, okay, it returned a response. So, 
So the same thing I do with the cluster 2. Network is unstable actually, sorry for that. Okay, so uh, the same thing is replicated across clusters. Okay, so the next step, I'll show how do we override some things. To do that, uh, we are going to patch the federated config map. Uh, uh, just the one particular property or a field we are going to override, like the content of that. So with Quebec uh, on Shanghai. So, and this uh, will do only for cluster two. Let's see. It is. Uh, it takes a little time uh, to do the reconciliation group. So just let me. Give it a little time. Uh, the cluster should be able to pick that and uh, restart that part. Let's move on. Okay, next up, uh, let's show about the placement. To do this, uh, we are going to apply a label to the uh, KuFed cluster. Um, so right now you can see uh, in our federated deployment. So it has been uh, deploying to cluster one and cluster two by default. So we have two clusters in the federation. Okay, so uh, we are going to label our cluster one with uh, uh, region equal to China East. Then we are going to uh, update the placement saying deploy only to uh, clusters which has this label region equal to China East. Yeah, now you can see uh, it is not uh, deployed to cluster two. It only deploys to the matching uh, cluster. Okay, so let's move on to the slides. <clears throat> okay, this is the uh, architecture uh, of KuFed. Uh, so basically we have a type configuration any KTS resource uh, uh, we uh, kind of up convert into federated type uh, so and then basically it has a, a template placement and overrides directives within that type uh, we need this is a, a new uh, API type that is a CRD which we create uh, during the we have provided tooling for that like to convert uh, any KDS resource to the federated version of it and then there are uh, little cluster configuration like uh, what all clusters are there in your federation you need to do a join for that to join your federation uh, and then using this information like there is a controller uh, which can uh, propagate these resources to those clusters this is an active reconciliation uh, model and above this like you can uh, build up your custom controllers to uh, work. We have uh, uh, sample uh, uh, working prototypes like the cross cluster service discovery, which we have built and scheduling. Um, uh, so 
which are built above this basic building blocks uh, these are not yet uh, moved to beta uh, but uh, uh, depending on the features we will move those uh, later so then uh, there will be a propagation status which will be collected and uh, you don't have to uh, visit each and every cluster to uh, look at like uh, what is the status of that resource so tooling as i told like uh, we have built a tooling to uh, enable uh, uh, any given type without changing the code uh, so you have a kds resource uh, we can change it to federation resource and uh, uh, deploy to the federation control plane and this particular federate is for a single command like you, you can use it in a command line to convert from uh, it's like a, just a templating kind of a tool <clears throat> So what we have done in the recent past is like initially we started off with Federation V2. Uh, we initially separated these as a separate CRDs, uh, federated type placement and uh, override uh, due to reasons like uh, the different actors can control them. Uh, but uh, we realized that it is a harder problem to solve like uh, uh, for both developer and a user uh, to group all this for a single resource. So later we kind of, um, this is the change which we did before this uh, uh, beta release. Like uh, we have put all of the uh, directives or we call it subtenants to uh, within, a, uh, within a single unified uh, federation type. So now we also have a status which gives the propagation status of it. <clears throat> Okay, uh, so and also as part of moving to beta, uh, what we did is uh, to conform to the KTS uh, API spec. Uh, we have a few uh, federated uh, uh, federation type CRDs uh, which are required for the functioning of the uh, features which we have uh, developed. Okay, so coming to Sorry for this PPT, actually, I couldn't uh, see the Google network. Okay, so coming to future work. <clears throat> uh, so we plan to uh, uh, improve the usability and documentation around it so that the learning curve is uh, smooth. Uh, so we want to make it uh, as easy as possible from uh, uh, deploying a app with a single cluster uh, moving towards app, uh, deploying a app to uh, multiple clusters and uh, we plan to uh, do a Elm plugin uh, to auto convert the manifest while deploying so that uh, the with the default uh, behavior it could be deployed onto uh, multiple clusters and then uh, we also plan to uh, do some higher user level facing API but this is a harder problem so there is uh, some other work within the community like uh, app CRD which uh, tries to do these things and uh, we also plan to uh, implement a full reconciliation kind of a model uh, wherein it is similar to GTOPS or multiple clusters okay so I uh, invite uh, Shimpan to give a little more deep dive into the internal features喂,OK。好,接下来我给大家讲一下就是这个,啊,我用中文啊。讲一下QFI的它的一些,呃,更深入的相对细节一些的东西。呃,我们在使用QFI的它的一些,呃,更深入的相对细节一些的东西。呃
。然后第三步就是，我们把我们已经创建的 Kubernetes 的资源，让它 Federation， 就是把它分布到我们所管理的不同的这个子的集群中去。所以大家可以认为这是两部分，然后一共有四四个方面。我们首先来看一下命令行这边，我们 Join 实际上是要让一个普通的 cluster 和我们这个 c u b e c o n t r o l 的 control c u b e f i l e 的 control 的连接起来。那么这个连接过程就是通过 c u b e j o i n 去放放进来的。那么我们可以想象一下，我们要把一个呃 member 的或者这种呃成员的 cluster 连接到我们这个 c u b e f i l e 的 controller 里来，我们需要做什么？我们事实上是需要 c u b e f i l e 的 controller 知道有哪些的 cluster 我可以用。然后同时要让 c u b e f i l e 的 controller 知道我怎么样才能在那些 cluster 里边创建我的资源。好，我们可以看一下，首先的话 c u b e c o n t r o l join 会创建一个 service account 在这个 member 的 cluster 里边，然后这个 service account 会去办的一些 RBAC 的权限，让它可以在 member cluster 里边去创建资源对象。然后，它会创建一个 c u b e f i l e cluster。我们自己定义的 CRD， 然后在这个 CRD 里边，我们会将 Member Cluster API Endpoint 放进去，我们会将 CA Bundle 放进去，我们会将我们创建的那个 SA 的 Token 放进去。有了这三个信息，我们就可以，我们的 Cube Fund Controller 就可以知道我要到哪个地方去访问我的相应的 Member Cluster， 然后我要用我我要用什么样的这个 C Security Communication 的 CA Bundle 去。做我的这个安全的通信，然后我要用什么样的一个身份，在那台机器上去做我的这个操作，也就是 SA token 所要达到的目的。那么好，我们可以说，有了，当我们用 Cube Control Join 创建了一个 cluster 的 Cube f i d cluster 这个 resource 的时候，那么它就已经纳入到我们 Cube Conf Controller 管理的范围之内，它就和我们的这个已已有的这个 Cube Control。呃 c u b e f i d Controller 的这个 cluster 组成了 Federation， 你可以加入更多的。好，当我们把若干个 cluster 加进来之后的话，我们组成了一个 Federation cluster。我们现在需要做的就是把某一个类型的资源分发到这些 cluster 中去。那么我们有一个功能，就是说我们要把哪些资源分发到不同的 cluster 中中去。我们是根据需要去使能的。你可以用 cube enable 来做到这样的事情，比如说你要把 deployment 分发布到这些管理的这个 member 的集群里中去，那我们就可以用 cube f i d enable deployment 这样的一个命令，然后它会帮我们去创建一个 federated deployment 这样一个 CRD， 这也是我们定义的，它最终是用来描述一个一个普通的资源，一个 Kubernetes 的资源。它怎么样去分布到这些不同的集群中去？它以一样一种什么样的定义分布到不同的集群中去？然后同时我们会创建一个 federated type config 的资源，它里边连接了我们前面创建的这个 federated deployment 和我们将要在目标集群里创建的那个 deployment。它实际上只是做一个配置，对这两个做一个连接。好，有了这个信息之后的话，比如说我们的 deployment， 我们就用 deployment 文例。有了这个信息之后的话，那我们就可以把你在本地的 Kubernetes cluster 创建的这一个 deployment， 我们可以用，呃，啊，啊 ，sorry， 有一页我没有讲。好，我们说刚才我们 federate 是这个呃 deployment， 有了那个之后，我们就可以把 deployment 放到不同的集集群中去了。那么还有一个资源，它是不太一样的，就是这个 namespace， 因为 namespace 是一个容器，它容容纳了所有的资源。那我们可以想象，我创建了一个 test namespace， 我只把它分发到我的 cluster 一、cluster 二里边去。这个时候，你又创建了一个 federated deployment， 然后你在里边只是我要把我的 deployment 放到 cluster 一、cluster 二、cluster 三里边去，然后我还是 test namespace 里边的。那么这个地方就会有冲突。那么 namespace federation namespace 它做了一个等于是呃 limitation， 就是做了把集群的子集帮你划分好，然后然后当你真正要去使用这个 federation cluster 的时候，你无法超越
federated namespace 的这个限制，这实际上在管理上会带来一个方便，管理员可以授权某些 cluster 可以被某个人使用的话，他就可以创建一个关于这这几个 cluster 的一个 federated namespace， 让这些 namespace 仅仅在这些机器上去这些集群上去启动，那么当用户在使用它的时候，它的使用的这个 member class 的范围将不会超过 federated namespace 所限定的这个范围。我们刚才说了 resource 的这个分发，事实上，当我们创建一个 Kubernetes resource， 它是在本地集群有的。那我们要把它分发到我们 Federation 管理的这个集群上去的话，那我们就需需要一个命令，这只是其中之一。我们还可以直接去创建相关的 resource。这个命令是帮我们简化的，就说你有一个现成的 Kubernetes cluster 一个呃对象在这里，然后我们用 Kubernetes control federate 这个对象，那么这个命令会帮你创建一个 federated。Deployment， 假设你用的是 Deployed， 有一个 Deployed 对象的话，然后它会把这个 Deployment 完全复制到所有的这个 Member Cluster 里边去。那么你可能会说，是不是我每一个 Resource 我都要做一次 k u b e r f i e d 事实上，我们提供了一个更方便的命令，就是你可以把一个 Namespace 以及在这个 Namespace 里边创建的所有的这个 Object 统一的分发到所有的子集群中去。所以你就可以用这个 Federation Namespace。With content, 就可以达到这个目的。好，然后，呃，实际上我们刚才说的那些都是命令行上的事情。我们的 controller 还是要做一些事情的，要不然的话，你仅仅是只是创创建了一些 CRD 而已。呃，当我们用 k u b e r f i e d enable 的时候，我们创建了这个。Federated type config， 比如说我们为 deployment 创建了一个 federated type config， 那我们在我们内部的 controller 里边，它会看到，看到之后的话，它就会创建一个 sync controller、呃。它就会创建一个 sync controller。然后有了这个 sync controller 之后，这个 sync controller 就会去监控你的所有的 federated deployment。如果它发现已经有了的话，它会把在 federated deployment 里边的这些，这个 deployment 分发到相关的 cluster 中去，也会监控相应的状态，以保证我们在 federated deployment 里边要定义的所有的东西，在我们的 member cluster 里边，它起的是对应的。呃，这里其实就更深一步了，就是一个实现的问题。我们可以想象，除了像 deployment service 这样的一些 resource 之外，我们还有更多的 CRD 的 resource， 那么你，如果我们需要去做一个代码去处理不同的这种 resource 的话，我们不可能为每一种 resource 去写它相应的代码，所以我们把相关的这个 resource 的定义抽象出来，把它作为一个 unstructured 的一个结构，你可以认为它是一个 rod binary， 啊、呃、rod data 呃 data structure 或者是 KV whatever， 就是说你可以认为它是一个公共的透明的一个结构体。然后在这个结构体的基础上，我们有一个公共的处理逻辑，可以把每一种，不管是你的 deployment 啊、service 也好，以以及你后来 federation 这个 CRD 也好，我们可以把它用统一的逻辑来处理，做相应的分发。然后你可能会问，那如果我们不知道这个对象本身的内容，我们要怎么样才能确确定我们这个对象是不是 updated？ 的？就是说我们这这个。Federation federated deployment 更改，是不是真正的反映到了我的 member cluster 里边的所有的 deployment 中去呢？为了解决这个问题，我们实际上是做了一个简单的 checksum。我们把 template 还有 override 做一个 checksum。如果 checksum 有改变的话，我们将会重新去把我们的这个 deployment 这个 resource 再 forward 到相关的 cluster 中去。啊，基本上就这样的情况。因为时间比较紧张，所以讲比较快。大家如果感兴趣的话，接下来可以跟我做更进一步的交流。那呃，就是这些。如果有问题的话 ，OK， <笑>谢谢大家。